friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works workshop. Just came in from cutting about three more trailer loads of wood. It's, I think, March 2nd, uh, 2019, and three more trailer loads will last me about three more weeks if the weather's not too bad. <laughs> it's about right, a trailer load a week, and that's if the weather's reasonably mild <laughs> it's a trailer load about every two days if it's really cold just got this in and you know i've learned not to say this is a simple one but this should be a simple one it's a broken neck right here you can see the crack i think in the and it's i don't want to pull on it too much but the strings have been loosened up already but I think we can open that up enough to get glue back in there. We'll try a syringe. We'll try all kinds of things. We may even use the air compressor to blow some air back up in there and force the glue back up in there. So hopefully we can do that really quickly and send another instrument down the road. Well, I think I've got things about ready to start this. I've drawn a bunch of glue up into this tube. I put the needle back on here after I drew the glue up in there. I'm going to force this open a little bit and the, to keep it, like if you push on this, you'll break it. So what I do, the way I do it, is I force it open with a wedge. It's a little easier to keep an even pressure on it with the wedge, you know, rather than try to keep an even pressure with your hand. And, the, and that way the wedge, it'll, it'll, that'll keep it open. And we're going to see how much glue we can force up in here. And so far I'd say none. All right, that's not working too good. I got a better idea. Well, this is my very, very first time I've ever tried this. So we're gonna see if this is a really dumb idea or if it'll work. I'm just using very low air pressure Trying to get glue up in there. I can see glue coming out of the end of the nozzle. Well, I changed my whole life. No more corporate strife. Put your alarm clock away in the drawer. No more conference calls and no meetings in the halls and no business to conduct in a ball. And no self-serving boss, nor the threat of the loss of the paycheck that I've earned need to find. Well, this worked better than I was expecting. Uh, I didn't think I was going to get glue penetration, but it looks like it's penetrated all the way through. I think you can see it coming out inside in there. I believe you can see that. So you can see that it went all the way through. I was worried about it because it didn't look like it was going to do that. Because I'll be out on that ranch where I can reach the first branch of that corporate tree grown from on high. I don't own it, it just manage its worth. It's a small slice of heaven place down here on earth. Care for his trees. Actually, he said he had a new set in, in the case, but I figure why not just save these. I don't see any reason why we'd have to change them right now. I think we got her cleaned up pretty good. It's probably going to squeeze out again whenever I put the clamps to it. These clamps have leather on them already, but I always, on things like this, put even additional leather in there. That's really doing a good good job there. You can see the squeeze out and oh yeah, real proud to see the glue squeezing all the way out here. As you can see, it comes all the way out up under the tuning key even. So it definitely penetrated. I was concerned that it was penetrating. But using the pressure of the glue bottle worked better than the syringe in this case. I tell you, I have almost no luck with syringes. I know everybody talks about how wonderful they are, but doggone it, I've tried them a bunch of different times. And I have had success with them, don't get me wrong. But 
it's been limited. Just using the pressure of the glue bottle and, you know, a damp um, brush and a little air pressure to blow it around up in there. That worked perfectly. Just worked perfectly. I'm going to get some more clamps and find some ways to clamp this yet, too. Okay, there's a, a look at the last little bit there. You can see the glue squeeze out right on the end. And it should just be fine. I'm just going to go clean my rag up and go back over the whole thing one more time with the cleanup. And I have a feeling you won't even be able to see this one. Well, there it is. I've cleaned it up really, really good. Uh, don't think you could get in there much better and do a much better job. And we're going to let that set for 24 hours. Well, friends, it's actually two days later. This, we, this guitar came in on a Saturday evening, and this is Monday morning. Now, you can see the crack around there. And actually, when I glued it back, the clamp dented it just a little bit in this area right here. So it put a little dent in it right there. Now, keep in mind, I had leather on there, too. But it still did dent it a little bit. But other than the dent, it's just about perfect. Now, I, I went ahead and off-camera sanded it with some 600 around there. So you can't feel it at all. It, there's nothing there to feel. And then I buffed it back out with the semi-chrome polish. And I've just checked his, intent, or his action on the, the guitar, and the action is perfect, really. There's really nothing else that I need to do to it. I've tuned it up. It's up to pitch. It, you know, it's, it, in my opinion, it's a little bit of a dead-sounding guitar. Not too bad, but it's, it's, you know, in person, it just sounds a little flat, a little dead. But it's not a bad guitar, and... What he doesn't know is that I'm going to surprise him and give it to him for free in terms of the work. I'm not going to charge him anything. And the reason is he's a college student and he told me that he's a psych major and he plans to pursue a career in music uh, therapy with uh, young children. And I figure that's a, a noble cause, and uh, a noble cause deserves a uh, break every once in a while. So we're just going to give it back to him and not charge him anything. Thanks for watching.